again here I am so now I've glued the mast into position this fiberglass rod and that has been epoxied in and that is strong now prior to me doing that I drilled I fitted the head on and drilled a hole through and put a bolt on lined it up so that while it, the glue is setting I can put it in and make sure that this is set at 90 degrees okay so it's level with that and checked everything set up okay when that was done took it off glued that in position now the height of this and the height position of the servos was all determined by how long I can get my rods now these are bicycle spokes two millimeter bicycle spokes um, 300 mil uh, long 298 to be precise but 300 so that that determines what I have and th th this is mark 2 and decided to make my mast longer than the previous one because I was getting blade strikes onto the rudder at the back so if I move it up a bit it should help that okay now as I discussed before that the angle rearward angle of this mast you aim for about 10 to 15 degrees rearward angle using your tail plane as your datum line okay in addition to that you're going to need some down thrust on the motor again the usual about three to five degrees what you would normally expect on a an airplane fixed wing plane now the reason why this is angled back is so that when it's flying through the air as it's being dragged through the air, the blades are being dragged through the air, it will windmill or to rotate. So not like that, like that an angle, okay? And you set the head up to about 90 degrees to that. Now obviously we can alter that. Oops, move that. These are only slight temporary at the moment while I show you. So we're looking at that being set up at 90 degrees initially. Okay, we'll set all that up and then do trimming flights because this may need to go further back or further forward. You may need bright as well. So initially aim for 10 to 15 degrees back on the mast. Make sure that when it's glued in that your head is set at 90 degrees like that so that it will run to the rods perfectly. Now the reason why we have metal rods, these are just just metal rods at the front and not at the back because as I said that the blades are angled like that so the constantly one are going to pull back and it's better that the tension is being pulled on these rods rather than being compressed in the rods they would bend okay so that's the reason why that is there I've decided to move the servo lower down because it allows me more movement on my servo because before this part would hit that and that would restrict the amount of uh, control throw I could have and uh, experience of flying the other auto gyro is I need as much control over the rudder as possible now the tail plane I haven't done anything with that but I've left that as it is it just slots in my reasoning behind that is if it does get a strike or a knock I'd rather that pull out and fall out rather than uh, break Plus, if it does break, I can always slot another one in. Okay. The uh, motor, I've put it roughly the same position, which is just above there, with the thrust line is here, above here. That's where it worked out from before on that. Okay. So that's where we're at at the moment. I've now obviously got to infill that with a bit of wood or foam. I've got to fit the undercarriage and something to hold the uh, speed controller. And while we're on the speed controller, this is my speed controller, a 30 amp speed controller is all that's needed. And um, all I've got available is a 40 amp. But what I did find is this connector here from Hobby King, I th think it's quite good because you always have to solder them together. Now you can solder them together and try and work out which is the right way direction and then seal it up and you never have to use it again. But if you're going to use the motor again, you usually put bullet connectors on and then you can unplug them and switch them around so that the motor moves in the correct direction. But with this one, I can slot it in and if it's running in the wrong direction, I can unplug it. Turn it round, 
plug it back in again and the motor will go in the opposite direction so I thought oh, that's quite a neat idea okay so that's that the next thing how in fact actually the head is uh, I got it from Coolwind it's a C30 Razor Auto Gyro head it comes like that in a packet and you build it up the other thing you're going to need is a delta plate it's a piece of uh, thin fiberglass like that. now that's the one for the atom special now if you go on uh, cool winds website uh, you'll find a lot of plans and a lot of parts that you can get for auto gyros now obviously in the past i have built and bought auto gyros and i've crashed them and uh, the reason for me making a little one is because a it's cheap but it's that bounceable material and as you've seen on the previous videos I've, I've crashed it loads of times but nine times out of ten I'm able to pick it up dust it down and have another go but if you make something out of balsa wood or something like that and you break it in the learning process you probably are going to bounce it a few times but the learning process is you keep keep that's it but if you go to the field once you break it and then you're not going to learn again until you've got another one so that's the reason why I chose a little glider and, it, and it's proved fruitful for me for learning okay so next part now fit that on there fit me undercarriage fit something to hold the uh, speed controller in place and uh, we're off then that's it almost finished there is uh, plenty of room in there for my battery and you see that's dwarfed in there don't need that amount of space but if you can make the space better the, the other reason I altered this is because I did find I needed more weight up front so by extending the nose that will also increase the the weight forward weight so let's uh, move on and I'll see you in the next one